Hey guys, how's it going? This is not NATO. I shook my head, seeing him walking up to me. I tried to act natural, but failed when my voice cracked right away. Uh, oh, oh no, um, I'm not going anywhere in particular, just uh, heading nowhere fast, you know. I pointed at the guitar in his hand, trying to hide the smile coming from the thought that he played, and played well. I didn't know you played guitar, are you any good? He looked away, a little embarrassed. I'd try, I mean, I'm still learning, but I can put a song together. Just nothing that I want to. All of the music I listen to has some of the craziest instruments going on. Especially progressive metal. Dude, that stuff is intense. I turned my face at him. Did you just call me dude? His eyes bugged out. No, I didn't mean that. I laughed at his reaction. I'm just messing with you, but that look on your face sure was priceless. He looked at his watch, seeing it was still early in lunch. I'm not holding you up, am I? You don't have anybody waiting for you, do you? Is that why you were in a hurry? Uh, oh, no, uh, nobody's waiting for me. I mean... I didn't plan to eat lunch with anyone today, in particular. I coughed, uncomfortably. Well, you can sit with me if you want. All of my friends decided to play hooky today. I guess, just nowhere too far. I don't want to run up the stairs on my way to fifth period. Walking beside him, we went to a place to sit down at. So what? They didn't tell you they were going to ditch, or are you too much of a goody two-shoes to skip school? Well, if you ask me, it didn't matter much. I didn't know what he meant by that. On that day, he saw I wasn't eating, and tried to share his lunch with me, no matter how many times I said I wasn't hungry. After that, I started bringing my own lunch. Waking up early enough to make one on my own. My mum, snoring away in the other room in the morning. It wouldn't be so bad if my black lipstick didn't smear onto my sandwich bread. But, when I applied more lipstick after eating, I would catch Guitar Boy staring at me. And I liked it. It was good to have someone look at me in a good light for once. Not because they thought I was a freak. He told me he liked my piercings, and he liked the way I dressed. I bet he would have said more if he wasn't so shy about things. But I liked that about him. He didn't try to butter me up or raise my self-esteem because he thought it was low, like how most girls were. He treated me nice because he wanted to. I know I sound like a know-it-all all the time, saying how I knew what he was thinking, but that's how it goes when you observe rather than act, when you see how other people talk and react from afar. I spent a lot of time watching other people live and talk, having nothing to act upon, until I met Gerard. That's when things changed. He hung out with me every lunch for a week, and that's when I easily assumed his friends didn't really play hooky. He asked me out that Friday. It was cute. He was all nervous and trying to make it sound like it wasn't a date, but dinner and a movie, that's a date. It was my first. I never had anyone ask me out before. At least, I never had anyone talk to me long enough to have it as a yes or no. Anything before was just from a guy who was either desperate as hell, or thought I was, having it be the first thing they say to me, 
as well as the last. Gerard played some music for me at the cemetery, taking me there after the movie. Night sky, soft acoustic guitar, gravestones, the crickets chirping like they were on fire. It was a perfect end to a perfect date, made even more perfect when he kissed me by the iron gates. I never thought my heart could race so fast in a short amount of time. When he was leaning towards me, I had to hold my breath to stop myself from freaking out. Time froze. It was just me and him in the world, in the cemetery, under a dead tree. He held me close and I held him back. I didn't think it could get any better, and I wanted to stay there holding him until the sun came up. When he said goodbye and headed off to his 1950s suburb, I fought the urge to call out to him and chase him home. I didn't want him to leave me. I knew he wasn't that kind of person. I knew he liked me a lot. But I didn't want the chance of him leaving me. I was pretty sure this was Lenore's gift to me. I mean... What else could have caused a guy like him to fall for a girl like me? So, if they had the power to make him like me, I was sure the spirits right under my feet had the power to make him stay, to eliminate any doubt in my mind. On my way to the other side of the place, I strolled by a line of graves, opposite to the side I went by last time. In the moonlight, a gravestone caught my eye, the name underlined by one of the bare branches of a tree. Roderick Usher, 1784-1833. I didn't even know the town was old enough to have someone from the 1800s in it. But I guess, even the smallest towns had to start sometime. Like clockwork, I got down to the grave, put a hand on it, and said, From me to you. I didn't know what I did differently, or if it was just my imagination anticipating what was bound to happen, but a cold pulse of something went right through my arm. Right away, I felt like sweating, like a fever was building up. I figured I had dropped to my knees too fast, or I was unconsciously excited about the next ghost I was going to talk to. Maybe the older the soul, the harder they hit, or something like that. After getting up and having the soothing wind relax me a bit, I headed on home. Right on arrival to my ever-empty house, I nearly flopped over the welcome mat in exhaustion. The movie drained me. The kiss made my brain kick into overdrive. And the gravestone made me ready to call it a night. Getting out of my corset and into my typical skull-covered pajamas, I slipped right into bed, not even bothering to turn on any lights while getting undressed. Of course, having my head on the pillow made me wide awake. Drowsiness was avoiding me like the plague, but thankfully, I had a full moon to look at, lighting up the room through the slits of the blinds. It got me thinking. I started to worry if Gerard was going to stay. I knew he liked me, but to know me, To know how I was? That was what I was worried about. The thin, self-inflicted slits on my exposed arm were shadowed in the moonlight, almost amplified. I tucked my hand under my head to avoid those recent memories. I needed him to stay, 
I needed another from me to you to make sure he wasn't going to dump me like some trash in the gutter. I've never been dumped before, but it must be awful if the sheer thought of it has the power to make me want to fall to the ground and never get back up. It was the thought of, if not him, then who, and knowing there was nobody else. The pain from pondering stabbed at my insides, making me feel tired again. I would have probably passed out right then and there, but I couldn't shake off the feeling that someone was watching me. Rolling over, I gasped at the sight of a man sitting at my desk, facing away from me. His entire body was covered in an old hooded cloak, burns and holes covering the back of it, nothing visible under the openings. It was common for coachmen to wear that sort of thing. I figured he was riding a stagecoach for someone when a bandit came in and slit his throat. Something of that nature. That was my first impression, and it was far from the truth. He didn't turn around or move in the slightest. In a gentle and almost comforting voice, he said two words. Kill yourself. I froze, holding my breath like I was trying to hide from him. He already knew where I was, and even with him facing the other way, there was no way I could escape his sight. Sitting up and leaning forward, I carefully moved as if I was nose to nose with a cobra. Not daring to blink, I kept my eyes on that faint shadow in the corner of the room as best as I could, ready for it to fly at me. I'm sure a ghost could do whatever they wanted, not chained down by a physical mass anymore. I had no idea what I was dealing with, and regret was already coursing with my blood. I excuse me? What did you say? Turning his head to the side, he spoke more firm, yet still calm enough to make it sound like he was asking if I wanted more tea. You heard me. Kill yourself. Breathing harder than ever, I could see my breath clouding in front of my mouth, the air growing colder. I tried to keep myself under control, but the best I could do was prevent tears of fear from coming out and my shivering from being too noticeable. Is... I'm assuming that's your request? Yes, it is. And I believe it is the only one worth requesting. Don't you agree? I shook my head, resisting the urge to open my big mouth and possibly anger him. I knew for a fact the last thing I needed was for him to be angry. Um, no, not really. I don't like that request one bit. Is there anything else I can do for you, perhaps? I only have one request in mind, and that is for you to kill yourself. You may choose the way you die, but it must be by your own hand. But why? Why would you want me to do something like that? He stood up. I flinched back, almost falling out of the bed. You have my request, he said, absent of emotion. I suggest you fulfill it, or suffer the consequences. He suddenly blended with the darkness around him, disappearing before my eyes. The air grew warmer, returning the sense of life inside the room. 
as for the feeling of being watched. That lingered as I lay awake for the rest of the night. It was one of the longest nights of my life, looking at the ceiling and hoping it wasn't going to be my last side of Earth. Thinking back to what had happened to Lenore and how she willingly did what I was now being requested to do. Right after, Gerard came to mind, and that was when I knew I couldn't do it, no matter what. I had someone to look forward to. I had something to cherish and fulfill. It wasn't much, but it was all I wanted and all I needed. I've already gone through the low point of puberty, and I already had the scars reminding me of how foolish I was. Never again would I give in to the temptation of an easy ending. To quote the raven, nevermore. Nevermore shall I succumb to the false joy I had presumed to await me on the other side. Seeing the spirits showed me that there is not much to do after death. Despite two life-changing visits, I still wasn't sure if the spirits were even real. Could it have simply been me going crazy? I'll admit, I'm not a very stable person, and when I was younger, I used to have imaginary friends. Not many, but I still had them. But everyone had imaginary friends. I'm sure I wasn't the only one. Could it be the loneliness getting to me? Making me crack? Anyone would have had some effect after being absent of human interaction for so long. No matter how much they preferred to be by themselves. I had no clue. All I knew for sure was that I didn't want to see that... that thing again. The coachman and his revolting request. Just thinking about him froze my skin and made my stomach feel like I was trying to digest a bowl of heroin needles. I tried my best to focus on something better as I lay there stiff and deprived of drowsiness. <laughs> 